Hello everybody, Konaja here, and welcome back to Automation, the car company tycoon game. And we are continuing on with our Vector Automotive Challenge, building our final car of the first year, 1990. And today we are going to build a competition for the Lexus LS400 Luxury Sedan. So this is kind of a bold strategy for our company to be launching a high-end car on our first year and uh, we'll take a lot of engineering time and use a pretty good amount of parts that we probably haven't used in the previous cars. 1990 was a big turning point for the Japanese manufacturers. Uh, they were finally really starting to get a stronghold on the luxury market. Uh, Acura had started building cars. Lexus had started to really make a good mark. Uh, Infinity hadn't quite gotten there yet, but they they were starting to establish themselves. Not to mention you have the fact that the American manufacturers were starting to kind of fumble in the luxury market. Uh, Cadillacs and Buicks and Oldsmobiles, they were all starting to get to be kind of known as solely old people cars, if you will. Uh, so they, they kind of started to lose their prestige. So it was a great time for those Asian manufacturers to step in on top of the European manufacturers they have things like you know the BMW 3 Series and the, uh, the Mercedes that, of the era that were kind of the, the staples, the, the known marks of the luxury market. So our company here, based in the middle of the ocean, uh, <laughs> is going to try and again strike that middle ground in between where the Asian manufacturers were uh, and where the American manufacturers are. I don't think we can touch what the Europeans were doing, but hopefully we can do something that's a little bit cheaper and a little bit more unique that will that will make our product interesting. So before we can build our car, we have to build something to compete against, and like I said, it's going to be the Lexus LS400, uh, which actually uses an engine that was previously built in my uh, engine recreation miniseries. And uh, it was one of the ones I picked because it is a very cool engine and something you probably didn't expect from Toyota of the early 90s. So let's kind of buzz through this. It's longitudinal. It's my Pearson strut up front. And in the back, it's it's basically a double wishbone setup in the back. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a toss-up. And I am going to go for the double wishbone, even though the sport feel... Uh, they may not have been going quite as much for that, but it does use a multi-like setup that is more akin to the double wishbone than it is to the trailing arm. Uh, so that's what we'll stick with. Body is uh, corrosive resistant steel. It is a... Notes, 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 notes. Looking at my notes. 110 inch wheelbase. So that is the only thing we will look for. Uh, body style does not matter at all. Even though it looks nothing like this, this car is. I want to make sure. Wheelbase. Oh, this gives me in, in uh, millimeters. Calculator. Sorry, I cannot convert from millimeters to inches in my head. <laughs> uh, just call me an American because it's true. All right. 2821 millimeters. I just don't know that this was the same. Uh, that is 111. Okay, so yeah, that is correct. That is the one we will choose. Fixtures, as always, I am just going to put. I am just going to put a grill on there. For the sake of having enough cooling space, which that should be more than enough, and I can trim it down uh, later on if needed. So this is the Lex, oops, Lexus LS400 analog, letting me know that this is unfinished. All right, and we must choose it. Oh, I forgot to put 90 on it. Confusing myself. Revise. Can I still do that? Oops, no. Revise platform. Uh, if this creates another one, I'll just delete, delete it later on. Can I not? You cannot, okay. 1990, not 1190. Yes, it's a medieval car. Um, okay, here we go, new model. 
is removable drive, as I mentioned. We must choose an engine and build it. And I'm gonna kind of fly through this because once again, I I have already built this engine, uh, so I will kind of just refer you to the original video I did on this because uh, this one came out pretty well. the chart looks like I ran into knock issues. I think I was wrong on the fuel. Uh, premium is what I intended to use. For some reason I put regular. Uh, now we got 258 and 255 so it's very close. I can probably just give it a little bit of timing and be there. 260, 255. Good enough for me. Right, this is the one UZ FE. So I'll save that. That item already exists, yes, but it is in the old version and I cannot choose it, so I will replace it with this one. Alright, now I can choose it. Okay, so as far as the gearbox goes, it is an automatic transmission in this vehicle. That was the only thing that was available. We don't have an automatic transmission. Of, <laughs> we don't have an automatic transmission available just yet. So we're gonna go with a single standard four-speed ratio. Uh, I never noticed before that it went all the way to nine. Well, that's a little bit insane, huh? Um, Spacing-wise, we're gonna give it a long spacing and a good bit of overdrive for the economy. It is not meant to be a very sporty car. It has 205 16s on it, with 205 wide wheels. Uh, brakes are pretty much standard for a car of this size. Nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary. There was sportier versions of this same platform, like the L, the uh, SC 400 and 300 were the sportier versions. But they were a little bit more uh, supra derived, the uh, supra derived than than were the LS series cars. Uh, looking here, I'm remembering to lower the cooling airflow. If only I can remember to do that on the Vector car. It is a five seater, and we're going to give it premium interior with a good little bit of weight too. And I'm going to go ahead and give it premium '90s entertainment as well. Uh, they were pretty. Uh, Innovative in that regard, they were highly toted as having great interiors with good options, and just gonna give it premium 90s safety as well. Suspension-wise, very similar to what you're seeing here. It's a it's a pretty softly sprung car, meant for everyday cruising and not for, um, you know, hot rodding around. <laughs> Okay, so 3251, I need to put a lot of weight into this car. Ah, and I missed something. You can indeed get ABS on these as well, so that might add a little bit of weight. Uh, it does not. Oh, that's strange. That seems like maybe something they should look into changing, because ABS systems do definitely add... Um, judging from my experience where I've removed ABS systems from a car, it's about a 50-pound module in a 90s ABS system, so... Uh, there's a good bit of weight behind that. Okay, so in regards to the weight, I had to give it a 10, 10, and 8 on the quality of these guys in order to get the weight up to even 3,700 pounds. So I have written down these values, and I will give myself the ability to use these same amounts of quality values uh, in, a, in a way of my choosing, or if I even choose to use all of them. Uh, but that's, that's how I'm going to balance it out a little bit better so that uh, I'm not going up against a car that is uh, given a higher quality rating solely for the reason of giving it weight, uh, I will be able to use that quality rating as well. Alright, now for Vector's answer to the Lexus LS400. 
We're gonna go with the monocoque chassis, of course. Corrosive resistant steel, front longitudinal, uh, McPherson strut, and double wishbone. So nothing overly different here. I am gonna go with corrosive resistant steel and a body shell that is a little bit larger, but not obnoxiously so. Uh, and that is this guy. So instantly we already have more weight than does the uh, the Lexus because we have a little bit more uh, size, a little bit more, a little bit more car in general. Uh, but that gives us more options in the future, and we can change this body shell a little bit to make it maybe not look quite so boat-like. I will work out the visuals off camera. I will remember to change the year. Hooray me! Uh, and uh, we'll see what it turns out like. Alright, so here at Vector we believe in putting a little bit of sports car in everything we build, uh, but in this case, it's a very little bit. This car is pure class. We have a very rounded front end with nothing overly over the top. It is not, uh, it's nothing but subtle. The back is a little bit more aggressive looking with the modern-esque uh, BMW style taillights. Of the uh, of the early 2000s era, but we'll forget about that. A nice subtle little wing on the back and a front lip. Overall, it's um, it's just a classy design. For the Vector Simba, save, and uh, I will let you guys figure out what you think that uh, that naming means. I'll give you the hint that it does indeed have something to do with the style of car it is. But moving on, we need to take this platform and make it into a model. It's gonna be rear wheel drive, and we're gonna have to build a new engine, most likely. Uh, let's see what we have in our selection so far. We have the three, or sorry, the 19DE and SE, which were low power, kind of four cylinder economy engines. And we also have the Z-Killer, the straight six, uh, which will fit. It has very similar power to the Lexus, but it doesn't quite have enough power, I think, to compete. So we're gonna choose this engine and we're gonna revise it. And we're gonna do some things to it to, to maybe step it up to the level of the 1UZFE. Um, now, I, I would really like to build a V8 to compete with Lexus and their their V8, but I don't think our company in our first year has quite the the backing or or power to to make a third group of engines. Uh, so we will just take this second engine and make a variant of it. And we had some room to to wiggle with this guy. Uh, our fuel was still pretty low, and I mean it was it was pretty highly tuned. It was making a lot of power, and it may actually have been a little bit too um, a little bit too racy for this car. So I'm gonna do some changes to it to try and try and bring it back down a notch, if you will, and uh, and try and get some more power out of it as well. So one thing I'm going to do is actually stroke this engine. I'm going to bring it up all the way to a very large inline six, 3.4 liters. And that will mean I'm gonna be able to take this cam profile down a little, get its smoothness back. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and do my one test mode uh, of the, of the, uh, the non-dyno test basically and I just want to make a check on all the bottom end stuff make sure everything's working all right before I, uh, I go ahead and use our one dyno test and also be able to see kind of what the numbers are doing so it looks like with the increase in size our connecting rods are kind of struggling but if we go back and let's run it up, we actually made peak power well before 7K, so I will reduce the red line to uh, 
Let's see how it is at 65. Still doing okay at 65, so maybe we'll do a little bit stronger of a connecting rod on there. I think we could probably spring for some forge. The material cost is not that much greater. Uh, the man hour is only another hour and a half of man hours. So I think, considering we have such an outdated fuel system and we're saving so much money in man hours there, uh, we can afford such things as forged connecting rods. And we'll go down to maybe 6600, because uh, I can still back that off after the test if needed. Now I'd like to see what our octane rating is going to be, and I would like this engine to make over the 250 horsepower mark. That would be, that would be my prime goal. Two fifty four. Our red line is like perfect. It's just after the peak. Uh, let's see. Bottom end part is reducing MDBF. It is still having issues, probably with the connecting rods. So I guess I will back off that that um, rev limit even a little bit more. Probably down to the sixty five hundred. Uh, how did we do on fuel octane? Still, still plenty of room there. So I will increase the compression. Here we go, final test, let's see what we do. Two fifty eight, so we made <laughs> just slightly more horsepower than the one one U Z F E. Uh significantly less torque. Oh, and we still had a bottom end part reducing the MTBF. Um well darn. I mean it's it's not really that bad. Eh well yeah, it's it's pretty bad. <laughs> Uh, 36,000 kilometers, that's not very good. Um, curious as to what it was. So it's too late to fix it now. It's still the connecting rods. Very strange. Very strange. Too late to fix it now. We'll, we'll have to roll with it for, for this model year. Uh, hopefully it doesn't ruin our reputation. Alright, let's go to testing. And we will save this as the... Z Killer H O. <laughs> Did you catch that last time? Z Killer? No? Nobody? Nobody got that? Oh well. Alright, save that one. I believe I did. And we will choose it. It's down at the bottom of the list. Choose. Alright, once again with the manual single standard clutch. I'm gonna give ours a five speed, uh, meaning that this one would probably actually have a manual option and an automatic option. Uh, there's one thing that Lexus did not do with their cars that I didn't quite agree with. Not everybody that wants a lux luxury car necessarily wants an automatic transmission. Um, but a vast majority does. A vast majority does. So I can, I can, I can accept that from Lexus. But uh, I would have liked to have seen more of those cars have manuals. Especially with those cool small displacement V8s in them. Uh, but back to our car. I'll go with the same logic of having a pretty good overdrive and a pretty long spacing. Medium compound road, we'll go with 16, 17s in the early 90s were just pretty much unheard of. I'm gonna go with a little bit more of a wide tire setup because our car will have more weight to it. Quite a bit more weight to it, I bet. Go with similar, similar style brake setup. Give it a little bit more brakes, because once again, a little bit more weight. None. Alright. Cooling airflow. Down. So interior. Five seats. Okay, with a premium interior with as much sound insulation as I can put in there. As far as entertainment goes, mm, uh, most of my cars have had 80s style stuff. I don't know that our startup company really had the money to put nice modern stuff into all of our cars, but this one, this one specifically, I want luxury 90s in it. Even though it's going to cost a little bit more, and overall this car may may cost very similar to the Lexus, even though it doesn't have the super high-tech engine, 
Uh, I really feel as though this is important for this car. So we're going to have power steering and ABS. And we're going to have... St or sorry, premium 90s safety as well. So we will put premium safety for the early 90s would mean like uh, a driver's side airbag, maybe even a passenger side airbag, and uh, high tech, very highly engineered crumple zone, stuff like that. All right, so the quality sliders. Remember we had 10, 10, and 8 on the Lexus. So I'm gonna give myself, I'm gonna go with a little bit different of a setup. I'm gonna go with 10, 8, not as much entertainment quality. I'm gonna go with 10 on the safety. Uh, suspension, pretty similar setup with uh, soft all the way around basically. I want to be. I want to try and get our comfort rating as high as I can. But you got to add into that that the um, the tameness of it will also affect its comfort. If the car is hard to drive or is unpredictable, uh, it's not going to be as comfortable either. All right. So testing, uh, as I kind of suspected, our weight is pretty significantly higher than the Lexus, 38,333 pounds. It's quite heavy and uh, yeah, the name. <laughs> the name implies such things. Um, let me load up the other car so we can do a little bit of a side-by-side -side comparison real quick and we'll see how we do. All right, so looking at our main stats here, it looks a little dire to be honest. Uh, not, not a whole lot of positive here. Uh, okay, let's see. Our weight is higher. Our front rear ratio is the same. I don't know why it's lit up red. Uh, top speed, we have a higher top speed by less than a mile an hour. Uh, acceleration, 0.2 seconds slower, so uh, we'll say that's a that's a nominal difference. Our quarter mile time is the same. Very interesting that it ends up being the same considering the, the vastly different powertrains that the two cars have. Our braking is a little better. Our cornering was a little worse. Aero efficiency a little bit better. Economy slightly worse, 16.5 to a 17.1. Again, that's a pretty nominal difference as well. Uh, and the downforce pretty much doesn't matter either. Okay, and let's go to the detailed stats. Okay, so this one, this could be close. I'm not sure. Uh, just looking at it now, it looks like we may, we may be doing all right here. Our car had a 40.8 on tameness. Uh, looks like we get, did good in the uh, lateral acceleration, brake fade, wheel spin, uh, dynamic response. I'm not really quite sure what that one means, uh, but we did good in it, so that's good. We lost out on the roll angle, softer, heavier car. Uh, we lost out on the footprint because it is a larger car, so it's a little bit harder to drive. Sportiness at 12 to an 8.8. .8. Looks like we did good on braking, brake fade, the torque curve we actually did pretty good on. That's, that's surprising, but a large displacement in line 6 going to have more torque than a small displacement in 8. Uh, loudness, we are a little bit louder, so that is why it is a little bit, a little bit uh, sportier, which may hurt us in the comfort. Uh, we had a little bit more top speed as well. Uh, comfort 55.1 to a 57.5. Uh, the base points was a 20.7. That is probably helped by the smoothness and the responsiveness of that inline six. Uh, looks like the chassis stiffness is the same. Uh, the entertainment quality, of course, we had those bumps. Right, prestige. I was kind of hoping we'd get the prestige nod, but uh, going up against a V8 car is going to be pretty difficult. Uh, the footprint, because it's a larger car, we get a little bit more prestige out of that. Uh, we actually have a little bit more prestige in our engine, which is surprising. Top speed. It looks like we lost out. That entertainment quality was a big deal, as was the interior. Strange that we lost out on the interior there. Uh, but safety, I'm glad I spent that little bit of extra points into the safety. Uh, but in reality, all that did was probably lose us points in prestige, so... Kind of a kind of an even draw there, uh, but yeah, footprint. Oh, the footprint because it's a larger car, it's safer, uh, and the safety quality was a little bit of a bump as well. All right, so it's math time. 
Alrighty, the numbers have been tallied. The Vector Simba has a 194.1 to the Lexus LS400 with a 189.8. Our first victory! So the overall points here came out very, very close. So I would say our car is competitive, but not an outright, you know, dominant car in its category. And hopefully we did indeed kind of settle into a little bit of a, a different niche than the, uh, the Lexus so that we can compete. Uh, our car is a little bit bigger, it has a little bit different of an engine style that is uh, maybe a little bit easier to drive because it is tour gear. But on the flip side, we don't have that cool V8 sound, we don't have the prestige of having a, a V8 in our vehicle, so we lose out a little bit there. Uh, like I said, I tried to make them very similar, but just different enough that we could be in a, a little bit different class. I don't want them to be going directly head-to-head. -head. I want us to have something something different about our car that would make us somebody go, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe I want the Vector instead. Okay, so that is our first model year complete. That means it is time next episode to work on changing up some things. We're going to fast forward two years into the future. None of our models are going to be uh, moving in generation, but I'm going to focus an entire episode on basically refreshing all of the models that we have. So after two years, uh, we realized what we did wrong, and we'll be able to do very small changes to every car to try to improve them uh, without actually making a whole new generation of car. Alrighty, so thanks as always for watching, and I will see you next time.